Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day and today we are here with a video on 10 rules to live by in old school RuneScape. Kind of lost my mouse there in the middle of the spin, but this is going to be hopefully the first of kind of a few different videos I'll do of this. I'll kind of break it down into 10 rules to live by in a few different sections of the game, but this one is just going to be more general. So hopefully you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like and let me know what you'd like to see this adapted to in the future down below in a comment. Would love to hear your suggestions. Essentially, I am just someone that's played this game for far too long and so there are some things that I've learned along the way that are true for my gameplay they may not always ring true with everyone else's but I think a decent sentiment uh, will at least stay with a good bit of you so hopefully you enjoy and let's get into it so like I said these rules are just going to be more general but they're definitely all ones that I find very important to just someone that's kind of you know going through their experience of the game so the first one is that no one at the Grand Exchange wants to help you. This could go for most aspects of the game, but more than likely, if someone is, you know, trying to let you make free money, why, why would they do that? Why would they not save the money for themselves? Why at the Grand Exchange would someone trade you and then need you to go trade their all? Why, like, all of this stuff, whatever scam it is, you know, you can't get scammed if you don't trade anyone and you don't follow anyone. If you just stand there and do nothing, they can't take your money. So if they want to give you the money, trust me, they would just trade you. And if they don't, then they probably want to scam you. So be weary of everyone at the Grand Exchange and just kind of in general for RuneScape, I'd say it's a, it's a good thing to live by. Rule number two, the Duel Arena is not the way to go under any circumstance. It is a lose-lose scenario. There is no way that you go out a winner. If you go there and you chuck bank, obviously if you lose, you have no money. Thus, you are a loser. If you actually do make money, then you're more likely just going to go and keep staking until you lose it, or you will you know, be able to win that money, leave there as a winner, and eventually the staking addiction will crawl back in there. Because you know what? You just made a ton of money in no time at all. And once you feel that experience in RuneScape, why would you want to grind something for hundreds of hours when you could just go chuck? It's so fun. You can make the money. You know, it's great, right? So don't go there. Don't get started. If you're if you're in the <laughs> if you're stuck in the arena already, you know, I feel bad for you. I was there at one point too, but I would just say it's not the way. It's an expected lose game as is and, you know, if you consider the other factors, no one goes out a winner, you know? Rule number three is to never focus on RNG, and that was not supposed to rhyme, but it did, so we'll take it. Um, <laughs> in terms of this, I mean, it's, it's mostly PVMing RNG, but also pet RNG and just anything like that. Don't focus on your RNG. It's random number generator. What's it matter if you care? If you care about it, if you worry, if you stress about it, nothing changes. You're still going to get everything the same. The whole world around you doesn't change because you're a little worried. So I would say just don't focus on it. Um, also, every drop that you get that's a 1 in 5k that couldn't have been the pet. I mean, it could have been the pet, but no. I mean, there's tons of drops. The odds of you getting 5, 10 drops in a row in the exact order that you got them is rare as is. So everything you do in game is rare. So don't compare certain RNG to other RNG. Just take it for what it is. At the end of the day, if you play enough, you know, most people will probably be at the kind of same point of luck in the game because that's just how it works out after a large sample. Rule number four is to have some friends that you can trust. Um, you know, there are tons of different ways to meet people in game. Obviously, you can just talk to people you meet. You can join clan chats or discords like the ones that I have down below. Uh, but I mean, any clan chat or discord, social medias, you know, there's tons of ways to meet people in game. And that is always a good thing. Just having a circle that you can talk to, having some people you can trust. Um, it's a way to, you know, play the game with other people, lighten up some of the grinds that you may have, and maybe even enjoy bossing or group activities a bit more. So so it's a good time. I would definitely recommend it. And one little caveat, I would say, know how much you can trust them. There are a lot of stories of people getting scammed by friends. So, you know, just, you know, make the adequate risk reward trade off and, you know, just try not to take too much of a risk with it unless you know that someone is good for it. Then number five is to just do the quest in the diaries. Eventually, you're going to have to do them. You're going to get to a point in game, if you plan on playing long enough, 
that you're just going to have to do the quest. You're going to have to do the diaries no matter how much you hate them. And if you would have just done them sooner, you could have saved yourself, you know, much more time in the sense that you would have had more things unlocked in-game, more uh, just quality of life things that you could have used that you weren't using because you just pushed it off for no reason. It's just, I know, it might not be fun, but there's nothing worse than when you have to start doing your diaries and you've done basically none. Then it makes it feel like so much more of a burden. So if you do it here and there, you'll be all right. Number six, this is a simple, simple one. And that is, if you're playing old school RuneScape and you don't plan on attacking anyone, go to your settings and turn player attack options on hidden. That will stop you from getting skull tricked in the wilderness. So there's no chance that you're gonna attack someone accidentally, uh, whether you know you were trying to click on a spider web and someone logged in or someone told you to attack them and you thought it was someone. There's tons of different ways you can get skull tricked and if you have it on hidden, you're not getting skull tricked. Um, also people at KBD be especially weary of getting skull tricked. Like I said, if you turn this on, you won't have to worry about it, but people always try there because a lot of new players to the wilderness go to KBD. And it's a lot like the Grand Exchange thing that I said earlier, you know, no one in the wilderness is trying to be your friend. So if some dude at KBD is like, hey, box me so that, you know, we can get in a fight and then these guys won't PK you. Once you box him, you're probably going to end up getting sculled and then boom, you're, you're dead for even more money. No one's trying to help you in the wilderness. Uh, so again, be very weary. Which segues me to rule number seven pretty easily. And that is don't hate the PKers. I know, I know you want to, I know you die to them and you're like, God, man, those PKers, they're what did it to me. They're the worst. I hate them. I hate, they're, they're so toxic. He told me to sit. He told me to sit when he took my spade. It, it sucks. I get it. But it's not their problem. I mean, really, if you see anyone in the wilderness and they have nothing on them, that means it's like three or four hits and they're going to die. And then you can see if they had anything on them. I've definitely gone out in the wilderness with stuff on me when I shouldn't have. So they'll take that risk because it doesn't take much time at all. And to be honest, there's not that much going on in the wilderness. And you can't blame them for that because it's Jagex's fault that there's not enough content out there and there's not enough, um, you know, incentives to get the average player to learn to peak and get into it. There's just not any incentive structure for anything to happen in the wilderness other than, you know, like revs and some bosses. But other than that, they just do whatever. So they'll kill you and it sucks, but it is what it is. And then number eight is know your money makers. This is one that I mean, I am just a big fan of. I love money makers because the faster you make money, the better you make money, the more you can fund your account and, you know, keep kind of rolling over and, and getting the grind going easier. So if you are, you know, no matter what stage you're at on your account, you want to have a few money makers that you know you can do um, with different levels of GP or just whatever you're feeling like doing on a certain day, just stuff that fits your mold. Because if you have those money makers, you're never going to get into a spot where you feel like your account isn't really progressing because if you have access to money, you have access to progress. So, you know, it's basically just a direct line. So as long as you have those in place, you are good to go. If you need any money makers, I have some videos on them and I'll probably make some more soon because I haven't made many money maker videos in a while. So I'll kind of get back into that, but definitely a lot out there. So you gotta find some. And then number nine, this one is tricky for some people and a lot of people compare their account to me. And I just recommend don't compare your account to others at all. I don't think, that that's something you should do, you know? It's pretty useless in my opinion because when you compare yourself to someone else, you don't know what kind of play time you guys have, you don't know what kind of goals you both have, you don't know, uh, you know, how much knowledge you have versus what they have, you don't know play styles, GP availability, there's just so many different things when comparing accounts that can go into it, so why would you do it? Then you're just going to compare yourself to someone and if they're better than you, I guess you'll be like, darn, I, you know, I think that's how it works, you'll just be a little sad, I, I'm guessing you're not too upset, but I mean, at the end of the day, there's no point. You're going to always find someone that's better than you in something. That's just how the game goes. And it makes no sense to compare yourself to other people when you just want to play the game the way you want to play the game. That's what this is all about. You play and do what you want in the game. So why would you compare yourself <laughs> to other people then to feel pressured into, you know, I, just do what you're doing. It's fine. And then finally, this kind of rounds out all of this stuff with the money makers, the do your own thing. Just have dedicated goals have goals that you have planned out and know yourself when you make these goals you know if you're someone that doesn't like to get into grinds don't make your goal to be 99 obviously or don't make your goal to be anything extraordinarily high but if you're someone that likes grinds then 
may be, you know, it just depends on what you're into. But as long as you have like long reaching goals that you can set your eyes on, then from there you can kind of build backwards and see what steps you're going to have to take to get there. If you don't have that goal, you're just taking steps in random directions that you really don't understand why you're doing it. You're just doing it and hoping stuff works out. And while it might, you're going to be, you know, a lot better structured if you go down one path for whatever you want to do. So you've got to try a little bit of the game enough to know kind of what you like. But then at that point, once you understand what parts of the game are kind of your forte, then have some goals down that way and start to build towards it. And from there, you know, mix it up wherever you may need. And I think you'll be having yourself a good time in old school RuneScape. So yeah, that is it for the 10 rules that I live by in Old School RuneScape. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Like I said earlier, if you did, make sure to leave a like. Any of them that you would like to see from me, let me know in a comment down below. And on top of that, if you guys want to see more videos like this, as soon as I go live, make sure to hit that subscribe. Also, we'll be streaming some hardcore later on the Twitch down below if you want to check it out. And with that said, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, peace.